Yes, Cinder, a remix of Dark Souls 3 by Rotaka. Folks, you know what that song means. If you don't by now, <laughs> I don't think you will. Well, yeah, what are you even doing here? Uh, that's, that's not true. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, regardless if you're uh, here from earlier, from before in the previous 89 rounds, or if you're just mm -hmm. joining us for the first time. Welcome. <laughs> Indeed. Welcome. Round 90, the humans have had their turn. We have had many turns, in fact. <laughs> uh, I think it's somebody else's turn. Um, please, we have, we have uh, turned our card sideways and end our turn. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> there we go. Totally not a trap card. Or no, no, don't, don't, even, don't, don't oh, look no. at that. Don't look at that. Don't worry about it. Yeah, no, it's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. This is Insert Credits. I am Mr. Bond. And I'm Tormod. Oh, good gracious. It's been a heck of a month since last time, methinks. Um, I feel like Ooh, yeah. another three months have passed. <laughs> for some I'm on reason. call this month, so I agree. Oh, ouch. I'm sorry. I know how that goes. Yeah. And I hope to never have to know how it goes again. <laughs> that would be nice. But we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. Insert credits. We talk about Vigi games here. We talk about Vigi games in three major segments. First, we start off with some news. We talk about what's going on around the world, uh, locally, internationally, legally, financially, et cetera, et cetera. It's all a real good time. We usually have way more than we can talk about uh, in our <laughs> roughly two hour allotment, and we've got some other stuff to get to, so we can't uh, spend all two hours on news. Um, so after we cover news, we go into some, some tune skis, some music, take a little breather, listen to some good stuff, and then we go into what we've been playing the past month since last show, and then more music, because everybody loves music, and then at the end, we do our big favorite section. We do some design live on stream, totally unprepared, well, not totally unprepared, but reasonably unprepared. Oh, no, it's unprepared. totally unprepared. Okay. It, it's 100% unprepared. I was trying it's... to be charitable, you're right, it is totally Oh, that's unprepared. fair, I mean, like, it's it's literally just randomized game design, and we, 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 we design with what we're given, we allow ourselves a couple re-rolls if uh, we end up getting genres and themes that don't work out quite together, but what we end up doing there, there's this wonderful website with um, game design help and stuff, uh, Baroque Creations, they have a fantastic genre randomizer, and we just push the go button, and it gives us a list of genres and themes, and we make a game based off of it. Now, typically we don't choose the first roll, because we're all like, ah, oh, we could do better, and then either we get total garbage, or we get something fantastic, and we make something fantastic regardless. <laughs> like, I'm gonna say it's fantastic. <laughs> like we did last time, it ended up, what yes. was it? It was an erotic visual novel... Shoot, what was it? It was really good. It, I don't remember. It ended up extremely good, and I'm going to look yeah, it up just as a quick was, recap. Please do, because I, yeah, you mentioned it was a long month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's totally mm -hmm. purged from my memory, not that I wanted it to. Right, be. okay, sorry. As a, as a proc-gen RPG dating sim uh, um, with a theme of passion, which was hilarious, so we, we uh -huh. turned it into something a little weird. Uh, as we are wont to do, but that's what I makes was gonna it. Say, welcome to the show. Everybody. Makes it extremely fun to do. Um, so yeah, that's that's uh, insert credits in in three literally three acts. Um, yes, which is cool and fun. Uh, first of all, though, some housekeeping. Our next show, our next couple shows are already scheduled out. So for June, we are looking at the eighteenth uh -huh. at seven p.m. CDT. That would be round ninety-one. Mm -hmm. For July, that would be the 16th, we have slated in for round 92. That is correct. And since we like to keep these going three out, we're going to schedule our August run right now. It's looking like either, oh, well, I think it do almost it, has it, to be it, the 13th, do it, do it. doesn't it? Yes. It Friday the sure 13th, hell yeah. For round 93. Excellent. Ah, yes. <clears throat> I love easy decisions like that. I've had a... We both had long days at work, or we're kind of fried a little bit, and, uh, well, if a date just jumps out at us to schedule the next one, we're going to take it. And a Friday 13th is a, is a real easy sell. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, good. Good, good, yeah. good. Well, that's enough housekeeping, I think. <laughs> I'm done Fair working enough. for today. Uh, so uh -huh. that, that kicks us right into our first major segment, talking about some news. Um, well, okay, let's start off with the... This big persistent one that we've been following for several months, uh, the billionaire slap fight between Epic and Apple. They are into the trial phase now, uh, and there's been some interesting 
briefs and testimony flying around. Uh, the one that stuck out to me this past time was uh, some of Apple's testimony, where they bring itch.io into it for some reason. For and some reason. For some reason, right? Of course, itch.io being a, a, a game store slash platform thingy. That's very popular and very well regarded by the developer community, by the player community as a whole. Um, they're... Brief insert. <clears throat> yep. Brief insert. Brief insert. Uh, not We're going to paid... talk about itch.io in a little more detail after this news item. We, we sure will. We sure will. Their, their okay. big claim is um, they allow developers that put their games on the platform to choose what sort of revenue split they, they uh, take back. Um, the default is 10%. 10% goes to itch, uh, 90% goes to devs, but they can set that all the way down to 0% so that the devs get everything, um, mm -hmm. or they can go as high as they like. And so far that model has worked out, uh, very well for them. Very well. They are mm -hmm. obviously still here. Um, they are, at, I don't, I don't know about profitable necessarily, but it's definitely at least a labor of love that has existed for several years already. So they're not doing bad for themselves at all. And of course they have very very well regarded in the community and all that and a lot of people are are backing them and behind them and uh, and support them so that's good that's a little brief on itch.io so they were mentioned in apple's legal briefs or testimony or, or both really um as part of this spat between epic and apple where epic is suing apple for monopolistic practices and uh too high of a cut of their revenue share 30 percent on the app store uh, whereas Epic, with their Epic Game Store, takes, what is it, 12% now, I think? Um, so all the weird financial bickering aside, uh, Itch came up in Apple's briefs because um, you know, Itch is another game store, another platform. So, of course, why not bring everybody into this? They've already mm -hmm. pulled Valve into this for Steam. Epic, of course, is there. They've done some Amazon stuff. Google Play Store is involved, too. So we may as well just, you know, Toss it in, toss it in. I'm surprised Origin isn't involved or Uplay or, or whatever, but maybe that'll be for next month. Um, so the, the real amusing part <clears throat> about Itch's mention in Apple's legal things is that uh, Apple didn't go into much detail about them, citing that the content on Itch has uh, some game titles and, and, and content and all that that is too vulgar to be explained in legal documents. Um... Which is hilarious. <laughs> I was going to say, isn't everything supposed to be on the record? But okay, Right? Fine. Yeah. So uh -huh. that's a real interesting argument to be made. Um, uh -huh. And there's there's more info on, on Itch coming later in this news segment to kind of fill in the gaps as to why exactly they're being mentioned in this billionaire's pissing match here. So mm -hmm. uh, we'll, we'll just leave it at that for now. The, the trial phase of Epic and Apple is underway. Exchanging blows, everybody's just sitting back and watching, nobody knows how this is gonna go, etc. 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 So we'll we'll kind of put that to bed for now. I'm sure we'll have even more detail next month, and then we'll we'll talk about itch a, a little bit more uh in a few minutes. Some uh, less legal news. RuneScape is moving out of beta on iOS and Android mobile platforms. Now there was uh, a different RuneScape port app, whatever. Uh, already mm -hmm. on iOS for was a RuneScape Classic or something like the real, real old one that was originally, I want to say, Macromedia Flash, right? Way back in the day, <laughs> right? I know, uh, rip, not rip. Um, but those that that had already been ported, and now RuneScape is you know st kind of still actively developed. So now that's getting out of beta on those two mobile platforms too. So interesting blast from the past i remember not necessarily playing it a whole lot back in my high school days but seeing a lot of people play it and i was like kind of oh, all right that's interesting but not really my thing uh thanks so... for the pavlovian <laughs> um thing going on in my head by the way because <laughs> the whole you know out of beta we're releasing on time right yeah right uh -huh. yeah anyway of course of course <laughs> so yeah it's interesting to see something very long lived by internet standards still Inactive development and now even, <clears throat> excuse me, being advanced still in this day and age. So good job, RuneScape team. Good job. I knew people addicted to RuneScape before WoW was even a twinkle in someone's eye. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think we all had those kinds of acquaintances back in the day. Oh, yeah. You could always tell. You could always tell. <laughs> uh, more game store news. Microsoft is cutting the Windows Store fees for games only from 30%. To 12% as of uh, <clears throat> 1st of August. Now, 
what an interesting what an interesting pair of numbers 30 percent, which mm. just happens mm. to be mm -hmm. what uh the app store is charging down to 12 percent, mm -hmm. which just happens to be what epic game store is charging mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so here we go now windows store is involved in this whole epic versus apple thing sort of uh on, on a very indirect basis um that's funny let's get another billionaire company in there why not it's just, just turn it into a cage match let's just let's just go let's just settle this mm -hmm. oh in the, the more physical realm here an esports gym has opened up wow. in tokyo i know right it's so interesting uh it features booking scheduling hardware so your top end pc <clears throat> pcs and consoles you can go into this esports gym and and check them out and and work with them offers coaching and training services this is about as much gym as a pokemon gym i know okay. right it's <laughs> what an interesting thing what an I, interesting I, I think it's actually really cool it is it is quite neat like i'm not big on the esports stuff myself but this is a very interesting take on this like mm -hmm. not everybody can afford top tier hardware to keep up with consoles or pcs or anything like that Absolutely. so Putting this out there as, you know, a sub essentially a subscription service along the same veins of an actual sports gym um, mm -hmm. is a very interesting move. <clears throat> what a so. time to be alive. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that's opened up in Tokyo. Uh, I, don't, I don't recall reading exactly when, but that is open and ready for hardware booking, coaching, and training services. I why not yeah i, I know why why the heck not? why it's called a gym i i mean esports e sports gyms i don't know I, uh, yeah yeah capitalizing but, like, on the common name I, sure whatever <laughs> it's fine it's fine it is it really is fine <laughs> um geez we've got a lot of like game stores and selling platforms news uh this time around uh -huh. humble bundle <clears throat> trialed past tense trialed in the past month uh capping mm -hmm. the total amount that people could select to donate to charity of their purchase to 15 percent they were set to roll that out in a much wider fashion uh soon however however mm -hmm. after heavy universal backlash from the community at large they have decided to stop doing that uh -huh. um some reasons cited being, uh, you know, capping to charity is kind of the antithesis of what Humble Bundle started, set out to do. Uh, back when they very first started, you know, the, when the bumble, heh, bumbles, when the bundles number, numbered in 1 through 10, they were very well regarded <clears throat> as being very supportive of the devs and being able to support charity at the same time and yada yada yada. Mm -hmm, and now mm -hmm. they decided to go ahead and kneecap that and say, nope, you can only give up to 15% to charity. There was also some changes uh, forcing a minimum that would go to Humble Bundle itself. That was always mm -hmm. a, a custom choice you can make as well. They decided to, uh, I think the minimum was 5% now, or maybe mm -hmm. even more. Uh, so people didn't like that too much. On top mm -hmm. of, you know, capping charity, which is widely regarded as a dick move. So mm -hmm. they are no longer doing that. They have backtracked. 100%, uh, so they are back to normal custom splits between Charity, uh, the devs, and Humble Bundle itself. So, good. Good. Very good. <laughs> Unequivocally good. More legal stuff, because we just can't get enough of it this time, I guess. <laughs> Wolfire Games, the originators of the Humble Bundle, in fact, are seeking a class action lawsuit against Valve. What? For Steam's Monopoly on uh, game distribution. What? Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> I can sort of see where they're coming from uh, because you know, Steam, by and large, does have a, a pretty large majority of digital distribution for PC games, at the very least. But okay. that also ignores, hey, Itch, and GOG, and mm, Uplay, Origin, uh mobile game stores all those other things so trying to sort say of stadia? yeah or and stadia too right so sort of well yeah so what an interesting perspective to think that steam has a monopoly sure they have a lot of power and majority of the market sure but hmm 
Very, very interesting. Now, this has just started. The class action ha or the class hasn't been certified yet. I don't even believe uh, a judge has responded to it. So, hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. We'll have to monitor this and see exactly where it goes. Uh, personally, I don't anticipate it getting far. Uh, it doesn't help that uh, Humble Bundle took a bit of a black eye from the previous news mention. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. Maybe, maybe, maybe shit will change in a month or so. One more mention of itch that I've got, and I'm sure you've got more after this as well. Oh, you actually have this. Oh, thing is it the same? Mentioned. Okay, I don't, I don't want to yeah. steal it because I did add this like as our opening song was playing. So I will let you. Oh cover no, that's that fine. And, um, uh, so end my turn. <laughs> it's totally cool. Um, today is itch's first what they're calling Creator Day. And basically, everybody's revenue for every game sold for 24 hours is just 100%. Everybody gets everything. So if you've been waiting on any games or anything, any kind of content that Itch has, um, it could be game developer, like, sample packs or texture packs or whatever the case, like, just go buy it. Support the devs. Like, today is the perfect day to do that. It's kind of like when um, Bandcamp has the 100% days. I think they have some of that stuff. So um go go do it spend your money yay all right there's right. enough of that yep and that <laughs> is by default in fact uh, the devs do not need to opt into it that is just applied for the remainder of today so yes go go buy yes, go, go go spend go. your monies indeed now speaking of other um stores stores maybe i don't know Ooh. whatever um uh, sony again um Speaking of people waffling on stuff, uh, initially last month we reported that they were going to be closing the PS3 and the Vita stores and whatever. And everyone's like, oh no, digital distribution is going to be turned off and we're not going to have a, a chance to get the stuff that we purchased and there's no way to preserve it and all this other stuff. And those are extremely legitimate things to say. Uh, enough people said something where Sony just decided to backpedal on that entire idea, and those stores will instead remain open indefinitely, at least until they decide to close them again. <laughs> so. Good? I, Good, I, I guess. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, oh. There's just so much crap. Anyway. I, I'm trying to, like, focus on the good stuff, because there was a lot to sift through for oh, this month. Yeah. but. Focusing on, <laughs> okay, I almost said consoles, not at all. Google, <laughs> um, uh, Google had to remind us that Stadia exists despite a bunch of people leaving from it, and their deals falling through, and their games not showing up on their platform, and whatever. Uh, it's not dead yet. Uh. Apparently, Google had to definitely remind people of that. So you now know. Stadia is alive, and it's well. Moving on. Actual console tech. Xbox. So, as some of you may be familiar, um, Microsoft has had their insider program since about the Windows 10 time when Windows 10 was in beta. And it basically, the way that they distribute software these days is you have different rings, and some of them are... Um, kind of like a public test which is the fast ring and then you have the slow ring which is like they they thoroughly test the fast ring features after they have some improvements and then they push the change down so they're doing something similar for xbox stuff um now they're actually doing console os updates as insider mm -hmm. previews and whatnot and the console shipped with hdr 10 support which is the i guess the lesser of the hdr standards these days um, it allows it to work with 10-bit and all this other stuff. But so these consoles will support HDMI 2.1, both the PS5 and the Xbox Series X and S, which will allow you to have such things as 4K and I think console limited to 120 hertz, but also HDR. And HDR is a big thing because everybody likes their deep blacks and their very bright whites and stuff. And mm -hmm, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. More realistic image quality. So... Of course, um, Dolby, having been a player in everything digital with media, basically from the beginning, um, has their own HDR spec. It's called Dol Dolby Vision HDR, which allegedly technically is much more advanced and has a better color gamut and uses different compression across streams and whatnot. 
um, the insiders will soon get an update to their Xboxes to allow them to uh, negotiate these handshakes for Dolby Vision HDR if you have a TV or a receiver that supports those signals. So that's actually really cool. Uh, the PS5 doesn't have that yet. Um, to my knowledge, I don't believe PC has support for it yet either. Pretty sure Windows is limited to HDR10. Pretty sure. Um, so that's actually really interesting. Uh, Microsoft kind of uh, bungled their last attempt at integrating new tech back with the Xbox 360. If anybody remembers these things called HD DVDs, um, yeah, they, they tried a new video standard back then. They really fought for it and it didn't work out. But this time it's somebody else's and it's tried and true and allegedly better in every way. So that's happening. If you are unfamiliar or have not signed up with the Insider program, just bing. <laughs> Um, the the uh, Xbox Insider program, get yourself signed up. Of course, it's going to be tied to your Microsoft account, but you'll be able to opt in for these OS updates and the things like it. Um, let's see here. All right, think back to the year 1993. Um, the Super Nintendo had been out for about two years at that point. The game library was starting to improve. Uh, things were not looking like just basic little tiny upgrades from NES games now, and they were actually kind of coming into their own. Uh, sprites got much more interesting. The music got more involved. It wasn't just a port of, you know, the five voices that you can get on the NES over to something else with MIDI on top of it. Um, in the summer of 1993, Zombies Ate My Neighbors was a game that was released, and it was released a huge acclaim um i remember playing it at a friend's house loved it never got too far in it it was extremely difficult um i remember a certain friend of ours uh griping about it a whole ton because uh couldn't quite beat the game <laughs> got right to the end couldn't do it uh i hope you're watching space 006 i hope you're watching but <laughs> also my those, neighbors also one of those mm -hmm. games caught up in the um family friendliness of nintendo 2 as it had the <laughs> blood colors changed from uh -huh. actual red to the green and purple and whatever uh -huh. um but i think that's it the uh, the rest of the content did stay the same i'm surprised they even left in the the crucifix weapon too um yeah for the super nintendo release of it uh-huh so if you want some interesting history, as a brief aside, I hope, um, there is a lot to be read about Nintendo's 1.0 releases of their software, because especially in the 16 and I guess, well, okay, SNES and N64 days, they, they were a little more permissive, but then they backtracked a lot on future revisions of games. Go read about some stuff. Um, a lot of blood was taken out of games and was replaced with slime or whatever, and mm -hmm, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but in any case, Zombies Ain't My Neighbors was a hugely popular game. It was very successful. Um, interestingly, it had a sequel I didn't even know existed called Ghoul Patrol. Um, but those two games, they're getting a modern re-release here real shortly, uh, coming out on the 29th of June this year. $14.99 nets you both. You can get that bundle on PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC. Note that it does not include the current generations of consoles except for Switch. But you can go ahead and buy those. Um, $14.99 looks like it's going to include some multiplayer, possibly online stuff, maybe. I don't know. There's some stuff thrown around in speculation. Not a whole lot's been really shared about it yet. But, I mean, it's $14.99 for two games from your childhood, probably, at least mine. It seems like a fair price. Sure does. Um, I had also never heard of its sequel. I had never heard of Ghoul Patrol. Yeah, it's a thing. Was that so, also on SNES? I believe it was. Let's see. Um, it was described as two 16-bit remakes, I have to assume. Uh, also, Zombies Ain't My Neighbors came out a few months later for Genesis, too, so you could have owned it on the Genesis. Yeah, interesting. Yep, 1994. So, uh, one year later. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Interesting. Not to as much critical acclaim, but allegedly the gameplay is really good. So, hmm. I mean, if you're just going to get the bundle for the simple fact that it's Zombies Ate My Neighbors, then you also get this other thing that you may not have played. Right. So, yeah. it's it's a win-win. It's worth it just for the former alone. Absolutely. Uh, let's think to things based on games. Okay, so back in 1997... 
the then called Squaresoft released Final Fantasy VII. And it was hugely popular, continues to be super popular. And in its time, we had the Dirge of Cerberus as a sort of prequel, maybe? I don't remember if it's after or before. Whatever. It's a thing that's loosely tied. It has Vincent Valentine in it. Um, You had... What the hell was the original movie called? Advent Children. Advent there Children. we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. That came out and you had a bunch of people. You had the PS3 tech demo that came out with some sort of FF7 thing that people were just shitting themselves over. And then, of course, you ended up seeing the footage for the FF7 remake back in 2018, 2017 at E3. It was one of those years. It was weeks after I had back surgery. Yay. Um, But that, that kind of was a few years out because they were waiting for technology to develop on the PS4 and it was console exclusive. So it was just kind of there came out about the same time as final fantasy 15 and they were working on an expansion for 14 at the time. So it wasn't exactly the front runner for what they were developing at the time. Cause FF 14 was then a cash cow and continues to be that. And 15 was where they were trying to show off a lot of stuff with Nvidia stuff as they released it on PC a year after its PS4 release. Anyway, um, so Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 1 was released originally on PS4, and it will be coming to PS5 as a free update. Um, there's some room there where people are saying, hey, this might come out on PC after the exclusivity ends on console, because, well, FF15 did the same thing. Now, of course, um, Netflix wanted to get in on this action because they've actually been doing a whole lot of this kind of thing lately. And now they're producing an anime based on the FF seven remake. Now the remake included more plot elements than the original game. It changed some stuff up minorly just to give it a little more cohesion with what they were adding to it. I never actually played it yet. Um, I want to wait until it comes out on PS five. I haven't unboxed my PS five yet, but well for that, um, I'm looking forward to watching the anime at some point. Now I'm actually kind of like, should I watch the anime and then play the game? Should I do in that same time? Like, so I'm told that the anime is going to have themes from the story of the remake, but also original content that ties into it. Like things from before the remake happened and some side stories and things like that, that kind of tie into the overarching plot of the remake. So I don't know. Whatever. I still haven't played the demo of the remake. I shrug. I have this thing. It's sitting in one of my shelves back there. I've really been sitting on it because I wanted to give it the proper attention and things like that. Now, it's another thing. I mean, let's hope that it doesn't turn into what FF15 was, where it had an anime and a movie and some other crap, and, like, you had to actually watch those things to understand the story of oh. 15. Oh, completely like you can play it as a standalone game and like be like okay noctis is never mind <laughs> not gonna spoil it if you haven't played the game it's been a while but if you haven't i'm not gonna spoil it um there there's a lot of things that go along with that game to kind of give it a lot more oomph with its story because the game just didn't have the content so <laughs> So are we? I'm, still... I'm hoping that this isn't going to be the same kind of thing. Yeah, are we still at the point where any other like visual media based on a game storyline or franchise is going to be good by default? Because <laughs> um... we had that huge run of Mortal Kombat's and Street Fighters and and, and Resident Evils to some extent <laughs> that were um, how to put this tactfully kind of garbage mm. Uh, mm. in terms of movies and shows and 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 whatever. Now, of course, we've had you know Detective Pikachu and Sonic the Hedgehog, which were widely, you know, critically acclaimed, honestly, as uh, after media. After some time, yeah, after some time, uh, as media based on game franchises, right? So I, uh -huh, I'm, uh -huh. I'm like wondering where our default stance is by now. Like, are we expecting this to be good, <laughs> or are we just going to hedge our bets and be like, well, it's going to be crap, so then it's got a better chance of being better than expected? Mm hmm. <laughs> hmm. I mean, Netflix has a pretty good track record on the quality of the stuff that they've been producing. Pretty good. Pretty now, good. of course, this is the Final Fantasy VII IP. Right. They probably had to go under a lot of intense scrutiny to get the rights to do this. So I'm hoping 
that they have the talent and the budget and the time to produce something that's quality. So we all know that part two is being made. It'll be released at some point. I don't know how much of that anime is going to coincide with the release, maybe, because based on the extremely limited reading that I've done, I believe part one ends after you leave Midgar. And there's a whole swath of stuff that happens in Midgar, even in the original game. But I don't really see more than like a season or two of an anime kind of doing that stuff. So I'm I'm wondering if uh, it's going to be around the time part two becomes more relevant. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. Uh, it's happening. We don't know when. But it's happening. Seems like it's got a high bar to meet, though, just based on the... Uh... The IP that it's going after here. Uh huh. People are going to get real pissed if it uh -huh. feels like a half ass phone in type situation. Oh, absolutely. But mm. we'll see how it goes. Um, who knows? Maybe it'll release uh, not five years after it was announced. <laughs> Sorry, that was that was a bit of a zinger. Anyway, <laughs> um, so Nintendo with all of their hey, maybe it's um. Maybe we shouldn't include things like killing and stuff in our game descriptions and whatnot. Well, in any case, I've been playing a game called Super Animal Royale. It's been in early access since 2018. It was originally alpha, beta, and now we're in early access. And the game now actually has a scheduled release, sort of. Um, later this year... It will be coming to all of the major consoles plus Stadia LOL <laughs> uh, with its 1.0 release um, later this year. We don't know exactly when later is, but interestingly enough, um, we had we ended up having a season zero battle pass because it is one of those types of games that would have that. Um, and that's about to be done by the end of May. And on June 1st, season 0 0.5 is going to be dropping and... That, along with it, is going to have the preview of the console version exclusive to Xbox. So basically, they're going to test releasing it on Xbox and go through some QA on that. And then they're going to use the knowledge that they gained from like turning on crossplay and things like that, getting their universal account system set up because they're not using the online accounts that all of these sub well, subscription services for the consoles have. So it's not using Xbox Live. It's not using... Um, whatever Nintendo service is that I'm blanking on right now, the et cetera. network ID, or was that the old one? <laughs> no, 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 shrug. Um, so instead, it's using its own thing, and allegedly, because of that, you don't have to pay for the online subscription to play these things because it's not using the back end for those providers, allegedly. So, in any case, it's going to be coming to PS4, PS5, Xbox Series X, S, and the Xbox One, Switch, Stadia. A whole thing. Um, it's going to receive feature parity with the PC release. There's going to be cross-play. For those of you who already played the game on PC, bought some DLC, things like that, you will be prompted to create an account with the Season 0 0.5 update that brings it out to Xbox and whatnot. That account is going to be the same on every release. Your progress and your DLC is tied to that, so you can go between whatever release you want to play at the time and your stuff's going to follow with you. So that was a pretty huge announcement. Um, Pixile had been working with a publisher for a bit now, and they'd been sitting on this news very excitedly until they knew that everything was going to happen and things on the back end were ready to go. So that was dropped this month. Um, very excited. There's a lot of increased player base now because of the announcements. Um, very, very cute announcement trailer. It was a, based on a musical, actually. So they wrote a little musical with uh, singing derpy super animals and talking about how, well, the humans have had their turn. Yeah, and then the I incident see. happened. So there's a lot of lore in this game. It's kind of dark for something where cute little animals are killing each other. Um, <laughs> but the Nintendo version of it, specifically why I called that out, um, well, of course, Nintendo had to have their own edit. So humans have had their turn. Um... But instead of these cute little super animals being able to do things like cook and make music and stuff and kill like all of the other trailers, it's fight. 
Mm. And instead of them pulling out um, sharp weapons and guns and stuff at that point, instead it was all melee weapons. <laughs> so, uh. eh. Nintendo had their cute little edit to it, oh, but yeah. it's very definitely the same content in the game. So rest assured, you can still go ahead and use an AK on a poor little otter or whatever it is in the game that you want to mow down. <laughs> so, wow. Yeah. I had to throw that in there. The humans have had their turn. Um, yeah. If you if you enjoy um, games like that, Battle Royales, it's it's pretty simplistic. You drop, the circle gets close ends up being filled with skunk gas at the end of the game. And, you know, if you haven't killed each other by then, well, the gas will. So, yay, it's a battle of attrition, that kind of thing. So go watch the announcement trailer. Um, the crew, the limited crew that they have produced this entire trailer, and it's outstanding. So AnimalRoyale.com, or if you search YouTube for Super Animal Royale, um, it was one of Nintendo's most watched trailers on their channel when it was released. I'm not sure how the numbers look now, but... It's exciting. So that's all I got for news. Very good. I can think a, of anything else. No, that was a very <laughs> healthy news segment. I'm glad we went through all of that. We we made it through. We made it through. But now I believe it's time for some Toonskis. It is. All right. Well, continuing the trend from the last several months, we have something by Rebecca E. Tripp and Gamer of the Winds. It's called Zora's Dharma from The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, followed by Torchlight by Chimpazilla and Emunator from The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and wrapping up this segment with Noodlin by Preniton from Final Fantasy VII.
well, as much of a month or three months or six months or however long it's felt like it's been, uh, as we've had. Uh, I think we've we've played some games this time around, haven't we? Haven't we? Well, haven't we? Well, I mean, or a singular, game. but yes, <laughs> <laughs> some manner of merriment has been had. That's the important Indeed. part. Indeed. Yep. Shall I guess what yours is? Uh, I don't have to guess. I can just read it out of our notes, but uh, I, don't, I, I, I wouldn't want to. I, I mean, I talked thing, about but... it, and the the round title is kind of obviously based on it. It's announcement trailer, but. Super Animal Royale is the game that I sunk uh, about a hundred hours into this month. So, yeah, um, I'm still not great. <laughs> Definitely not great at twin stick games, but I'm I'm improving. Now, this is a game that people will swear up and down is meant to be played with keyboard and mouse. However, <laughs> it does have controller support, and with the release coming out on the first with the Xbox, I have to imagine that controller support is going to be expanded a little bit. The biggest issue that I have is aiming because you have you standing here and you use the right stick and it gives you a little perimeter like that. And you got to guess your angles after that, because on PC, you can just click to kill, mm -hmm, basically, mm -hmm. uh, obviously with weapon accuracy thrown in because there's different rarities of weapons anyway. Uh, yeah, console doesn't have that. Now, we do have excellent movement compared to WASD and yeah, we, we can do more than diagonals and things like that. So we have fine graded movement and it's really great. Um, I'm using the Xbox One Elite controller with paddles on the back uh, for movement and firing. And that's worked out real well for me, but aiming very hard. So that update will hopefully bring some uh, improvements to that. Considering I'm especially using an Xbox controller anyway, but um, regardless, I sunk about 100 hours in. I started at, um, let's see here, I, I ended up playing the game first, I think it was like June of 2020. Uh, it was just something to pass the time while Vlad was still not living with me and we wanted to do some stuff. Originally, I played the game so I could do something with him socially. Um, kind of didn't play it until this year again, maybe about six weeks ago. And now I'm level 114, 115. So 100 levels later in the game. Um, but I picked it back up again because I wanted to, again, be social and do a thing that my partner likes to do. So I'm, I'm forcing myself through learning twin sticky things. Um, I'm, I'm not bold enough to try a keyboard and mouse just yet. I tried. It's, it's really not anything but clumsy for me. But... The game is great. Um, I finished the season pass. I definitely got my $5.50 worth out of it. Um, still play on the daily. Uh, the dailies and weekly challenges that they have are good enough. Um, they ended up having something that was an Easter event that included something called Mystery Mode, which was randomized between seven different sub-modes, so you don't know which one you're going to get until you're in the lobby waiting to drop. Um, but that ended at the end of their Easter event and enough people liked it that they actually brought it back for this weekend. Um, they're going to be alternating between this and another game mode that was disabled for some time. So it's nice. Um, there's new content coming. There's fresh things to do until then. And I'm looking forward to seeing what they're able to do before the end of the year. So that's Super Animal Royale. It's a free to play game, uh, animalroyale.com currently available on Steam. Um, there is a Founders Edition that will no longer be available once the 1.0 gets released later this year, allegedly. But, yeah, you can definitely pay to do some stuff in the game, like unlock milestones and things like that. So you can do things in game like, you know, level up your weapons by getting enough kills on them so you can get weapon skins and things like that. Um, you need to have the Super Edition DLC in order to unlock all of the milestones. But beyond that, I mean... You don't have to pay anything if you don't want to. Hell, you don't even have to pay anything to play the game as it is. You can just keep fighting with what you have and level up to your heart's content. Animalroyale.com. Um, good stuff. That's all I've been playing. So now you mentioned that aiming with the controller is kind of a bear. <laughs> Animal. A little bit. Yeah. Um, have you noticed or have you seen an option to have some sort of aim assist or very nope. light auto aim or anything like that? There is no such thing included. Interesting, interesting. And I have a feeling that it won't be either because crossplay with PC and con or console like 
you don't want to have an unfair advantage for controller users. Right, naturally. So, especially when, let's face it, a lot of the player base after the Switch release comes out is going to be controller users. Right. Uh, right. There, there has been massive popularity, as I mentioned earlier, on um, the launch trailer on Nintendo's channel, and a lot of new people coming into their Discord, a lot of people playing the PC game for the first time and whatnot. Um, those lobbies are far from empty these days. So there's a lot of people who are anticipating playing it on console. Some people asking if you can use keyboard and mouse on console, which, you know, sure, whatever. I don't know how those operating systems work these days. But, yeah, controller support definitely is going to be improved upon. It kind of has to be. I mean, it's not bad right now, but we're not going to have things that... Um, sway things in the favor of controller users in order to entice them into the game. Yeah, I've always been real curious about the balance of that, even for like, previous Battle Royale games that may have had a, a, a console equivalent or a cross-play now up and coming. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I know there's always been a big brouhaha over, oh, PC is the best, console is the best, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've, I've played a handful of of FPSs like that, where there is a very minor amount that you can turn on that just help you aim a little bit better. Like, you're right, keyboard mm -hmm. and mouse is, you know, point, click to die, etc. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. like, that's that's good and all. But I, and I, I still play some shooters with controller myself, so it's like, it's not impossible. It's just, it's a little bit different. It's a little bit different of kind of a, of a hand-eye coordination type thing. Like, hey, you, you've expressed, you know, difficulty adjusting to WASD and, and mouse, which is a, the opposite experience I've had, because I started mm -hmm. very early with WASD and mouse on, on FPSs, so it's it's natural right, right. to me. Um, but yeah, that's that's always interesting to see a, a, a kind of a, a very different initial start on, on control schemes. And yeah, how I mean, they I never played PC even. games. So growing up, I had NES, that was my first, mm -hmm. and then, you know, moving on through the Nintendo consoles and whatnot eventually finally getting a ps2 at the end of its lifespan basically so i've been using controller exclusively on games and even when i started playing games on pc it was mostly the console ports to pc because right. they were better and i was still using ds4 or whatnot to play ff12 and now i'm using this xbox controller which feels great in the hand also by the way i meant to go look this up earlier um so for whatever reason there has been a shortage of the Xbox One Series 2 controllers. I don't know why. Hmm. They're out of stock everywhere. Interesting. Um, people are scalping them for $350 plus. Oh. I don't get it. All of the other controllers are in stock, but specifically the Elite Series 2, not. So I ended up pre-ordering from Amazon because I didn't even know that was a thing because they only showed the other sellers that had all of the expensive things instead of the Amazon.com option. But um, it was supposed to arrive sometime at, like, the end of June. Allegedly, it's going to be here in four to seven days now. We'll see if that happens. But apparently, that version has Bluetooth. And I want to try doing oh, yeah, Bluetooth on PC. So I want to see how well it goes. Um, I have to use the proprietary wireless adapter right now to get the Series 1 to work. So mm, it's a thing. But in any case, the Series 2 controller... I'm going to compare them side by side and see how they perform and whatnot for this game specifically. But I wanted to throw it in there because I totally forgot earlier. Right, but... yeah. I will say in general for the Series 2, they solved the grip issue rather handily. So that no hmm. longer peels off nice after fun. a moderate amount of use. The, <laughs> the only issue I'm seeing now is a, is a spongy right bumper. Um, oh, interesting. I have mashed down on that quite a bit. I was able to crack it open and, and reset it a bit to kind of keep it limping along. Um, mm -hmm. So I can keep doing that if it keeps getting spongy, but I'd really probably just rather get a replacement and hope that that one's a little bit better tooled. But yeah, that's fair. Honestly, it's a, it's a, it's a great, it's a great build quality controller. <laughs> like I, I love it. It's got that same heft that the original series one had. Um, mm -hmm. It's got the back panels like the original series one had, which is also cool. cool. Um same good sticks a deep uh, d-pad people kind of complained about the the xbox d-pads a lot i think um the the series 2 d-pad is i think a, a minor improvement i don't really use it all that much but you know, it's, yeah uh, i mean got the same stuff going for it really yeah i, I end up using the d-pad for like opening the map or 
opening the emote select mm-hmm, whatever mm-hmm. the case is. So, I mean, like, it's not ex- extensive use, but I don't know, it seems fine to me. I fidget with it enough because it's really satisfying to pop out and pop back in constantly, <laughs> right. as I want to do. <laughs> but, yeah. um, no, the back paddles are amazing for me because I basically just remapped the left and right triggers to the paddles on the back, and that's been real great. So... I like that um, profiles can get stored on the controller itself for input schemes. So Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. once you actually have it paired with the Xbox app on the PC, it kind of remembers that stuff. So hopefully getting a new one set up isn't going to be a pain in the ass or anything like that, but I doubt it will. Looking forward to it, though, whenever it decides to show up. I hope it's not one of those Amazon things where it's like, hey, surprise, this thing's coming, and then it just keeps getting pushed out by four days constantly until it eventually just gets canceled. (laughs) Womp. So we'll we'll see how that goes. But um, so far, the game as it is has decent enough controller support where people can be competitive. Some of the top players are controller users. Um, You just have to be real good at calculating uh, trajectory so that you can determine whether your aim is actually accurate or not. I tend to prefer things like dual pistols and other sprightly weapons because I can shoot a lot and eventually hit something instead of a hunting rifle where you get one shot between shooting and reloading. And that was a very fun weekly last week, but in any case I did finish it. So, um, yeah, no great game. Um, it's going to be just fine on controller. If you're a controller user right now, just find one that's compatible with steam and let steam do the rest and rebind your buttons as you want in the game and go play it. It's definitely free to try and it's a good time. Very good. Very good. So, over this past month, I've really just focused down on one game myself, really, uh, mm-hmm. on normal streams. I'm still playing Curse of the Dead Gods. Cool. Um, that is now moving into its let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh week uh, next week. I'm still going to be playing it next week because it's really fun. It's, um, I wouldn't say it's necessarily punishingly difficult. <laughs> it's another one of those games where it gives you the opportunity to play well and play mm-hmm. very well um, if you take a certain amount of caution. Um, I do not like caution. <laughs> <laughs> I like playing very aggressively, and it's very fun when things work out your way uh, when mm-hmm. playing very aggressively. Um, but I'm on to the, uh, the hard mode uh, variants of the runs through it now. Um, I just finished off the top tier normal mode one uh, Monday, I believe, this past week. Cool. And the, the, the final boss fight there was mm, very good. Very good. I got my ass handed to me the first time. Um, the second time I got there, I had either enough skill or enough drink or enough <laughs> other boosts to my to my build to, to see uh, yes. me through. Um, Consumables for health. Or, yep. or, or totally some combo thereof. Uh, so it worked out. It was, very, it was a very neat fight, very satisfying fight to finish. And then it was hard mode. It's like, oh, okay, I thought it was going to be done after this, but nope, <laughs> there's a whole other half a game, which is fine. Nice. Like, it's great. It's fun, and I love it, and I, I'm looking forward to playing it again come Monday. That's great. Um, but that's Curse of the Dead Gods. That's still going on. On the uh, uh, Shmup Book Club side of things, SBC, we started a new monthly, uh, not yesterday, it wasn't on yesterday, but the week before Thursday, our new monthly for the month of May is good old Zero Wing. Mm. That meme of a game. You know, all your base are belong to us, all that uh-huh. sort of thing, right? Um, it's very meme-y, as, uh, as one might expect. It's kind of dull, actually, as far as a game goes. It's, I think it originated in the PAL region, so it's keyed for 50 frames a second. Oh. Um, so it feels very slow. Yeah, I can imagine. Uh, even playing at those 50 frames, it's just like, this is kind of, it's not even really much of a challenge. <laughs> it's just kind of like, <laughs> all right, I guess I'll I'll wait here for 20 minutes and, and be done with a few levels. Nice. And then it's like, oh, okay, well, this is kind of, uh, meh. It's a, it's a decent enough game. It's a decent enough novelty play. We've all had a lot of fun playing it because, you know, memes. Um, but it's it's been an interesting... Um, it's been an interesting set of leaderboards we've uh, put up for it now. Uh, a couple of us have already one CC'd, one looped, or whatever. Um, I nearly finished a second loop, but I did a stupid at the end, so I didn't. Um, but it's it's a lot of fun. I might play it one more time for this month and then and then call it good. 
Uh, our uh, quarterly for quarter two, April through June, is still Ray Force. I didn't get a chance to play that again uh, since last time, but I probably will uh, perhaps next week, Thursday. And then our new quarterly and a half <laughs> for May through July is mm. R-Type Delta, one of the more highly regarded R-Types. Um, I haven't had a chance to play this one myself yet either, so maybe that'll be next week instead, or the week after, or sometime Ooh. thereabouts. Um, heard good things about it. People have said very nice things about it. Our type as a series is kind of hit and miss sometimes um, for either difficulty reasons or weird jankiness reasons or both. Um, but that's that's SBC for now, those three games. Um, long plays I have focused down on Spelunky 2. I've been trying to get to the super secret ending or whatever, and I have not even made it to the area before. The super secret oh. ending <laughs> so but you've been trying i have been trying really hard um and mostly it's my own hubris and greed and, and stupidity <laughs> that has been kneecapping me so uh as is want for playing spelunky. yeah as as uh -huh. and there's always the typical spelunky bullshit too so you know it's not it's like 95 percent my fault maybe 90 percent <laughs> my fault most times um the other 10 percent fall being on spikes like yeah that, that that as well or don't explode the jetpack that you're wearing or mm -hmm. don't get hit by something over said spikes or mm -hmm. um some kind of horseshit hit boxes or really long wake up times or and i could i could go on but i won't it's still a fun game it's still a fun game i like i like playing it a lot um people enjoy watching it apparently too so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh that will continue into the near future at the very least for long plays uh, Saturday grab bags. I revisited Risk of Rain two uh, once in the past month. Very fun game. Their recent um, content update added a new character, uh, added a few more other uh, loadout selections for a few other characters, depending on uh, certain clear conditions, um, tweaks and bug fixes and balance changes and all that. Uh, myself and 006 and Boris have played quite a bit of that uh, for our co-op stuff as well. That's a really fun like get together in a group type game and uh, you know fail miserably. Um, but we have fun with it anyway, so that's good. Mm -hmm. I also revisited Receiver 2 one more time on a Saturday grab bag. Uh, I had accidentally cleared all my progress, uh, mm -hmm. which kind of stinks, um, mm -hmm. but they did fix a... Uh, let's see, what well, which issue was it that they fixed? They fixed the PowerPoint mode bug that I was always running into. Every 40 minutes or so, it would slow to oh, like right, right. 15 or 20 frames per second, um, yep. so it was like playing a slideshow, which makes it really difficult to play. Uh, so that's been fixed. Um, but in juggling the versions that it took to fix that, I, oops, oops, my save, bye-bye. Um, that's okay. I tried to get it all back, but I, I was not making any headway because, again, it's a game that rewards caution. Um, I do not have caution, apparently, uh, so I end up getting capped more than once at a time, and then it sends you back, and it's like, ah, oh, fuck, I gotta do this again. Uh -huh. um, but still a very fun game, very, very entertaining game, a very different sort of first-person shooter. I've spoken at length about it in the past, so mm -hmm. I won't regale everyone else with the tale again. Um, just well, I do have to ask, though. Have mm -hmm. you been going back in the console and um, undoing your regressions, I guess? No, I haven't. I have uh, tried okay. very hard to do non-cheating runs through it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, that's fair. H hence why I haven't been quite able to restore my previous save uh, to its uh, former glory, really. All my progression gotcha. is now locked uh, until I pass to a sufficient degree to get everything mm -hmm. else unlocked. Um, but still a fun game. I think I, I still kind of dip into it a little bit uh, during the week when I just want a quick little try and then I'll get pissed at it and stop. <laughs> but hey, that, that's how it be sometimes. Absolutely. Okay, I think it is time for some more Toonskis. All right. So let's start with a remix from Golden Sun entitled Hope in 8 by uh, Lucas Guimarez, Damien Nguyen, DS, Jake Carl, Matthias Souza, Nathan Madsen, Sorry, and Wolfman1405. And then a remix from Donkey Kong Country entitled Wiped Out by Sir Nuts. And then finishing off with a remix from Pokemon Trading Card Game entitled I'm Not Going to Lose You by Juan Medrano, John Stacy, and The Bitter Roost.
All right, look, I gotta be honest with you. One, that was an awesome song. But uh, yeah. two, I don't know how we're gonna beat last month's uh, ad hoc. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we'll have to see what we're given uh, the deal with here, huh? Well, I suppose it is that time. Uh, is. We have this big button sitting in front of me so, uh, that says, suggest a game for me. Click the button and let the machine choose a game for you. Your genres are something plus something, and your themes are something. So let's push the button to fill those somethings in, shall we? Push that button. All right. Push that button. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. All right. Uh, roll one, which does not seem very strong. Uh, three genres and one theme. The genres include painting. Okay. Thank you. I, I managed to often somehow get my watch to interrupt me when I'm saying some combination of phonemes for this intro all the time. Anyway, genre one, painting. Genre two, adventure. Okay. Genre three, zero plot. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I think that's, that's, I'm okay with that. I can work with zero plot. <laughs> okay. All and right. One theme is satisfaction. <laughs> satisfaction huh yeah huh i mean i want to do something other than painting mama or something like that i mean yeah this, this seems like a very meandering <laughs> just 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 it's like mario paint but less mm -hmm. plot i guess <laughs> yeah kind of kind of disappointed mm. with what it rolled for us this time yeah that's not real strong i'm cool with a reroll <laughs> okay tell me when all right, go for it. Hit that button one more time. <laughs> All right. Three genres and one theme again. Our genres include stealth, god game, and strategy. Mm. Okay. And, <laughs> and the, theme. the theme is units. Oh. So this also writes itself. That's like, <laughs> that's kind of boring. <laughs> A little bit, yeah. <laughs> Huh, we all have right. one more we can work with here. Yeah, do we do we do we take that risk and and have to deal with whatever the last one is? I'm inclined this to say a... yes because this I... this combo is not really doing it for me either. Well, this would be the first time we ever go to seed number three. Yeah, yeah, it would so be. So if if you're sure, I'm I'm also pretty sure. All now right, let's go ahead and do this. Yeah, hit that button the final time. <laughs> what? Okay. This doesn't count. Okay. So somehow it gave me two of the same genre. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. um, we're going to call this a cock die, but this one was four genres and one theme. It was fighting, god game, puzzle, and puzzle <laughs> with a theme of highways. <laughs> so we're moving on from that. Dang, that theme was pretty strong, though. It was. I'm sorry. Oh, well. But can't help we it. had to reroll. We have four genres and one theme. <laughs> four actual genres this time. Oh boy! All right, <laughs> this is what we're dealing with. Okay. Genre one: dress up. <laughs> oh dear, we may have Genre... made an error. <laughs> I know. Genre two: art game. Hmm. Genre three: virtual reality. Oh no. And genre four: stealth. Oh no. <laughs> The one theme. Oh, okay. Resources. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> um. I, I think EI yeah, summed it up. Yeah. yeah. We could all use an adult, couldn't we? <laughs> so, um, I, I think it's safe to say that the stream from this point forward is going to be not safe for children. Mm. All right. <laughs> no, I, did, did we ever turn on the mature filter on, on the nope. channel? I feel like we didn't. Well, we may have to after tonight. <laughs> oh, dear. All right. Dress up, art game, virtual reality, stealth. With a the, theme of resources. With a theme of resources. Holy uh -huh. heck. Um, hmm. Well, let's take a moment to think about this. <laughs> let's ponder our sins. Yeah. All right. Let's reflect upon the uh, errors of our ways here. Oh, boy. Dress up. 
Okay, so like dress up and art game kind of does make sort of a bit of sense to go together. Kind of, because we could be like designing outfits and clothing and accessories right? and stuff. Yeah, okay. I can see how virtual reality would play into that too. Like you, you, you uh -huh. preview your creations, you go into a little, a little virtual dressing room or whatever. Um, oh shit, now this makes me think of VR chat. Right? Huh. Yeah. The hmm. the one that gets me about this is the stealth at the end. That makes it a little bit mm, uh, side eye. Yeah. <laughs> we got to find a way not to turn that into a crime. Okay. All right. <laughs> I hmm. Okay. I think I've got a way to do that, actually. Okay. Okay. So let's let's start with the story this time. Sure. Okay. So. Hmm. <laughs> okay. I lost the thread a bit in my mind there, but I think <laughs> I can bring it back. Okay. So, you are a failed um, fashion designer, right? Sure. You've tried to get a, jeez, uh, autocomplete filled in designer, as I was saying it. Thanks, Google. Um, <laughs> You've tried to get a job at this uh, at this clothing shop, and you were roundly rejected, right? Yeah, all right, fair. But you believe in yourself to such a degree that you really want to work there, and you really want to help them out, and their designs that they're doing are just awful. <laughs> so you are going to use your extensive education, knowledge, and maybe experience, who knows? You haven't been hired yet. Um, to very sneakily help them with their clothing designs without them finding out. So you're going to go in at night, avoid security guards and whatnot, and design clothes, and put them on racks and shit, and uh, observe the results in the morning. <laughs> okay. Right? That's, that's what I got so far. That's what I could come <laughs> up with to make it a non-creep-ass stealth. Uh, hmm. Uh, hmm. <laughs> Let, let's put a pin in that one and see what else we can come up with. Okay, fair. Fair. <laughs> like, I'm open to notes on it. Like, that's just what popped I, into my mind right no, away. No, that's fine. I, hmm. Gotta, huh. All right. So, <sighs> I'm just going to type this out whilst we're noodling on it, just in case we come back to it. No, that's good. Um, I'm thinking something cyberpunky, so. Hmm. Okay. I, I'm thinking that we could have holographic clothes essentially. So, basically, any kind of design goes, and the person with the flashiest thing that happens to be in fashion will, of course, be the most popular. Okay. Um. So basically, you need to. Hmm. You need to create a boutique that will draw the most people in with your unique designs and competitive nature. So I'm thinking that with stealth here, you could be... I don't want to go so, I don't know, tropey and say hacking, but like... Um, finding ways to get advanced information on other designs that haven't been released yet from your rivals and then trying to one-up them before they can release it. So I'm definitely thinking of some sort of like future dystopian boutique here where all of your competition is digital. Hmm. Okay. So is the... I, I just completely pulled that one out of my ass. Okay. So. Well, you know, all's fair, right? Uh -huh, um, uh -huh. So maybe your primary focus is then on <laughs> designing cyberpunky clothing to get uh -huh. your employees able to blend into your rival stores to steal their trade secrets? Maybe. Um, hmm. I'm thinking more along the lines of after hours, finding a way to get information on designs that haven't been released yet so that you could actually kind of like beat them to the punch kind of thing. Okay. Um, I would say that this is probably going to be like a single person shop or like one person stint. be like, Hey, co-designer, tell me if this thing isn't useful or whatever. Like I'm envisioning in my weird brain of brains here, 
um, essentially a fusion of extreme fashion popularity that is crossed with utility. So we have to think here that this is dystopian cyberpunk future. You need to have things that are both fashionable, edgy, and useful. And perhaps you are studying designs of your rivals. Perhaps you're studying the hidden capabilities of what those things can do. Um, perhaps you're in adding software into these designs in order to, I don't know, like uh, bug someone so that you can hear their conversations or something like that. Now I'm starting to think of like nefarious things that you could do if you give people things that are always on them. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. I like that. Okay. Huh. Let's go um, with that. So, okay, let's actually take that angle instead then. So, you need to design something that is so fetch that people will flock to buy it, including the people that maybe necessarily aren't the kinds of people that you want to associate with, but you see it as an opportunity to plant bugs in the stuff that they purchase so that you can learn more about whatever's going on. So that would actually kind of fit the resources bit too. Okay. Because yeah, I can see that. as you're selling to these uh, clientele, um, you're essentially collecting resources because, you know, hey, you now have this um, this malware in your clothing and we're going to turn you into a resource by the information that it retrieves for us. So, you, kind of so you send your customers out into the world with your stuff on, right? Mm -hmm. And then, like, they, they're wearing bugs or something that brings you intel in more... More advanced info on the latest trends, or maybe as they visit competitor shops, what their ideas are and stuff like sure. that, huh? Yeah. Okay. Whatever you need to do to corner the market. Need more intel on latest trends uh, and or competitors' designs. Clothing with malware. I don't even want to think about that being a thing in my lifetime. <laughs> you know, that's probably not too far off the future, so... <sighs> Ugh. I'm sorry if I was the one who sparked this oh, 20, no. 30 years down the road. I'm sure it's already well on its way, right? <laughs> I'm sure it is. Ugh. Okay, so we've got a uh, <laughs> a fashionable story and hook. <laughs> uh, right? Uh. <laughs> okay, um, how about we go from the top then? Uh, players, players, sure. players. Um, I would say this is kind of like a couch co-op thing, if not single player. Like, obviously, you can have people influence the design decisions that you make. Um, you may even have a co-op version where one person has to craft the malware specifically for the application that they want it for, uh -huh. while the other tries to make the clothing that will entice people to wear it. Okay, so like a division between form and function, right? Yeah, essentially, yeah. <clears throat> well, that could be a thing. Okay, I can see that. This is this is definitely going off the rails, but that's it, it sure is. But that's the whole point, <laughs> really. It is. It is. Okay. Uh, input method. Goodness. Hmm. Um. So for something this precise, I would have to imagine keyboard and mouse. Uh, I'm thinking like. On the level of hacknet, almost. Hmm. Mm -hmm. um, well, there's really those two different segments, right? The the design of the thing and then putting the malware into the clothes, right? Or right. I think having the malware, right? Like the actual code <laughs> side of it um, would be really entertaining if you had some sort of outside huh, resource, um, like what you had in hacknet to get you going. Mm-hmm. Um, but after you did and you made those connections, you can kind of siphon the information and kind of make it more specific as to what you want it to do, that kind of thing, instead of just buying script kitty crap. Um, with regard to the design side of things, I'm thinking, hmm, so what is the game that I'm thinking of here? Um, or you're kind of designing cybernetics and stuff, except it's actually clothing. 
Ooh, clothing that would function as a cybernetic addition or extension of your body, though. Interesting. Anyway, I was reading an interesting news article today that kind of made me think of that. Huh. Um, right. Apparently, the brain interprets a tool that you know how to use very well mm -hmm. as actually being your hands that are being used. Yeah, I think I read that same article like very briefly before this, too. <laughs> Come well, to think of actually... It. We could we can incorporate that. So the draw of this clothing is to provide both fashion and functionality in such a way that it makes arduous tasks feel natural to you. So instead of like augmenting you by giving you super speed or strength or something like that, mm -hmm. it instead makes arduous or mundane things trivial. And you need to determine the best way to kind of hack your brain to make that happen. Maybe. I still like the whole stealth thing of like going out and still using it as malware, but there, there's kind of two sides to it then. Oh, that would actually bring the hacknut thing to be more interesting though, because you have the two sides. You have the information gathering side, mm -hmm. and then you have the execution side. Like, okay, I have this thing. Let's make a functional design where we want this outcome and we need to figure out how to get there. Oh, that's nice. I like that. Okay. Um, a functional design, literally. Wow. Mm. Ooh. Ooh, that's a name. Hmm. Good, because titles are usually the worst. Yeah, they are. Functional design um, it is. <laughs> love it. Okay, cool. All right. So as for the We're actual writing an F sharp baby. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh so for the actual uh, uh method of doing the design then, the design of these uh -huh. garments slash things, it almost feels like um not quite paint by numbers, but drag and drop to maybe meet the criteria of the most popular thing or the up and coming popular thing as glean so, from Intel. I think like the visual style of this that I want, and I think it's going to contribute to how we interact with it mm -hmm. is. I don't remember if this is near or Deus X that I'm thinking of, but when they were talking about some of the augmentations to the human body that they were designing and things like that, there was this kind of neat, like, um, this wireframe that was extremely high definition of something that could be made, and you you can like pan around and switch the angle and stuff, and adjust little parameters and whatnot. Um, I know the games didn't actually have that in there, but that kind of view where you're looking at this thing, and you can turn it any which way in 3D land, and then be able to zoom in and like make small adjustments to be like, okay. I want this this circuit to go here to do this thing or whatever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, that kind of design. So yeah, you're given hmm, you're given the tools or the parts that you need to do any of these designs, but as you're learning from the hacking side, you can make them in such a configuration that it accomplishes the end goal. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, okay. So you have the actual research side that's almost entirely taxed. You have getting intel from the outside to see what other people are doing and stealing their stuff if you want. And then you also have the, hey, now I have the blueprints to do this thing. We need to actually do it in this other editor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I like that. Okay. I'm going to put that a bit under mechanics too because that makes sense as to something we need to do. <laughs> Intels and blueprints. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. So some sort of almost like a a three D CAD program ish um, kind of yeah. interface for for shuffling around these these design elements. Yep, except very <laughs> early two thousands right pixel interface style. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yep, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm sure I'm sure those who are around for that know exactly the kind of thing I'm thinking of. Okay, that works well for our graphic style, too. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. No, that's really great. Um, thin lines, rasterization, not rasterization. Well, it kind of is rasterization in, in an interesting sense, but um, design by putting parts together. Um, the assets for this, specifically, like if we're talking pix or pixel count, it's very concise. Um, it's not bloated Fisher Price Windows XP theme. It's the right. extremely effective use of space. Uh, insert window manager here that you like, um, kind of thing. So it's going to be concise, out of the way, functional. 
like the game. <laughs> <laughs> right. Functional design. Yes. Okay. Uh, dual point of view. Then we've got, we've got our terminal point of view, right? And then our <laughs> kid design point of view. All right. All right. Okay. Good. This is. Have you ever watched the anime Kill la Kill? I did. I. This is kind of making me think of that a little bit. I made it through most of it. I never finished it. <laughs> yeah. No. It's it's a fucking weird ass show. It, it sure is. It sure is. But it kind of makes me think of that in a way. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I see what you're saying with that, certainly. Okay. Okay. Uh, in inventory we already kind of have, right? Yeah, That's more or less. I mean, a lot of it's literally just, like, information gathering and circuit design and stuff like that. Oh, that's cool. I like that. What was that game where you were literally actually designing circuits? Uh, it was it was a puzzle game. Was it? Where it was teaching you about electronics and you were designing circuits, except it was like gamified in some sort of way. Gosh, I don't remember what it was. I, I don't um, recall. Well, for whatever reason, my brain's on that now. But okay. Well, our objective is pretty much already covered too with our story slash hook. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's see story hook. Really, I guess we're really just down to audio style then. Um, hmm. <laughs> Cyberpunk. Right? At the risk of being <laughs> like stupid cliche bag, like electronica and, and, yeah. and stuff like that. Uh -huh. I can spell it right. Ambient electronica, sure. There we go. Oops. Ambient electronica. I can dig it. <laughs> All right. I can hear it. I can hear it in my head right now. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Huh. All right. So this is functional design. Dress up art game with virtual reality and stealth mm -hmm. resources. Single player couch co-op to divide form and function duties. Uh, input with primarily with keyboard for the terminal sequences for designing the malware that's going into these clothes. And then... A mouse or gimbal to control the uh, 3D CAD program used to adjust perspectives and the design elements of the clothes themselves. Yep. Early 2000s pixely interface with raster and composited assets, audio style uh -huh. ambient electronica, dual point of view between terminal and CAD design program. <laughs> okay. Uh, with the objective to be to create a cyberpunk boutique that will succeed with most will succeed with the most competitive designs. Mm -hmm. By merging fashion with software to gain more intel on the latest trends and or competitors' designs. A little bit of English editing here. Inventory is your, your intel that you've gathered. Tools, blueprints, or designs are the actual things you're putting together. And that's about it. The other mm -hmm. stuff is covered by what we already wrote. Yeah, with the story, I mean, like, we could expand upon it at some point and be like, okay, so the more clothing gets out there, the more it can communicate with the other articles of clothing mm -hmm. and spread itself and proliferate. So then you'd have to decide, you know, once you have this massive network, what do you got to do with it? <laughs> so, hmm. <laughs> yeah, do you invest in automation or AI self-assembling clothing? And how do you keep it from reaching the singularity? And <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, maybe that's the point in the game where it's like, now that you have all of this out there where you need to make the moral decision as to like, do you want to do something good with this? Or <laughs> even though you've already been kind of evil anyway right. to start, but whatever. I don't know, shrug. Eventually morals <laughs> and ethics intrude. <laughs> yeah, do you sense. embrace your self-made singularity? Or shut it down? There yeah. we go. Yeah, I like that. I like Beautiful. it. Beautiful. Cool. Okay, well, I'm proud of us for staying away from the creepy <laughs> stealth. <laughs> yes, same. <laughs> Despite getting stuck with this honestly weird mix of things. Uh huh. Um, but let's like let's admit the first two rolls were boring and or dull. So uh -huh. this sure is, were. This is perfect, honestly. Yeah, I mean, <sighs> it's certainly the most um eclectic. 
Yeah, sure. It's pretty eclectic. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I, I'd say like the mo- the the weirdest is probably still last month's. <laughs> our our weird uh, visual not not even visual novel like dialogue based pseudo erotica. <laughs> We uh, were as classy as we could be. We we definitely did try to maintain a minimum <laughs> level of class. Uh-huh. Um, I don't know that we succeeded, but we did try. Mm, you know, an <laughs> effort was made. An effort was absolutely made. A participation uh-huh. award, at the very least. Yup. All right, cool. Well, I think we can call that design complete. Woohoo! Excellent, excellent. Well done to all parties involved. And we already did all of our rolls and stuff already, so I don't even have to go and roll and say what we could have had. All right, 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 right. Maybe I should write those down at some point. Maybe I'll go back. <laughs> when I go back through these notes, I'll, sure. I'll write down the ones we skipped over. All right. And I'll remind myself that we can those for previous ones. Two or 300 rounds down the road can go back to this and be like, okay, yes, we made the right choice. <laughs> or not. <laughs> or not. We'll have right. to see. <laughs> well, tonight we definitely made the right choice. Yep, we sure did. All right, well, we're coming to the end of round 90 here. Anything more we need to say? Don't think so. It's all been said. I love it when everything has been said. We need to get a <laughs> nice, smooth outro. Well, thank you very much, everybody, for watching and or listening. I am Mr. Bond. And I'm Tormod. We'll leave you with our typical closing track, a remix from Mario Kart Wii, entitled Wind in Your Hair by Overclocked University. Good night, everybody. Ciao.